Bobby Jo Stinnett was a young 23-year-old woman, excitedly expecting her first baby, a little girl. Bobby Jo was married to her high school sweetheart, Zeb. They were married less than two years, and they were expecting their first child to be born. They lived in a small town in Missouri called Skidmore. The baby was later named Victoria Jo. She would be born on December 16, 2004. This child's birthday would also be forever the date of her mother's murder. Bobby Joe's murder. Bobby Joe was brutally murdered in her home by a woman she befriended. This woman's name is Lisa Marie Montgomery. She is a mother of four who was pretending to be pregnant, would have been due December 13, 2004. In an apparent desperation to produce a child, since she claimed to be pregnant, she viciously murdered Bobby Joe and she cut the unborn child from her womb. In a few short weeks, December 8, 2020, Lisa Marie Montgomery is scheduled to be executed by lethal injection in Texas. She will be the first female federal prisoner to be executed in a very long That decision from a federal jury this afternoon. We have live team coverage tonight with reaction from both families. We begin with KMBC 9's Peggy Bright, who's been following the trial since the very first day. Peggy. Well, Jim, it took the jury less than five hours to reach their verdict. Montgomery's eyes were downcast and she cried quietly as the judge read the decision. Death for Lisa Montgomery and a lifetime of pain for her victim's family. Welcome to Left Undone. Incomplete Investigations. I'm Catherine. Please like, share this video, and subscribe to Left Undone. We go live every Saturday morning at 10.30 a.m. Pacific Time. Please join us there. But for now, let's talk about the case of Lisa Marie Montgomery and her victim, Bobby Joe Stinnett. Lisa and Bobby Joe met at a dog show in April of 2004. Both of them were involved in the breeding of rat terriers. They became acquainted through an online message board dedicated to their mutual interest of breeding these dogs. Bobby Joe had a website called Happy Haven Farms. This was her dog breeding business and it was located in the small town of Skidmore, Missouri. On this website, there were pictures of Bobby Joe and her dogs, and she shared about her life. When she became pregnant in the spring of 2004, she shared the news with her online community. Part of that community was Lisa Marie Montgomery. About the same time, Lisa, the eventual murderer, began telling her friends, family, and online community that she was pregnant. However, more than 10 years before, Lisa had had a tubal ligation. Tubal ligation is permanent sterilization of the fallopian tube. They are cauterized in surgery and they are separated so the egg can no longer travel to the uterus. Some people call this tying their tubes. So basically, Lisa has had her tubes tied. Now, it does have a very small failure rate, so I can see her trying to get away with being pregnant, but later it was proven that her sterilization was actually successful and she was in fact sterile since her tubal ligation. She began wearing maternity clothes, she told people she tested positive for being pregnant, and she started behaving as if she were pregnant. Her current husband, 
Kevin Montgomery, who was her second husband, he was unaware of her tubal ligation. And he didn't know that she had had a tubal ligation after the birth of her fourth child from her previous marriage. Her four children and her husband believed that she was pregnant. And some of her acquaintances also believed that she was pregnant, but some did not. Her former husband and his current wife accused Lisa of deceiving her family. And they were well aware of the fact that she had had a tubal ligation. They knew that she had been sterilized for years. Her response to them, I will prove you wrong. So using the name Darlene Fisher, Lisa contacted Bobby Joe on December 15th, 2004 via instant message. Bobby Joe had had a litter of puppies for sale, the rat terriers that she bred. So as a fake person, she expressed interest in purchasing one of the puppies. So they agreed to meet the next day, December 16th, 2004 at Bobby Joe's home. Now, Lisa Montgomery lived in Melbourne, Kansas. It's over 100 miles away. So it was quite a drive for her to go to Bobby Joe's house. But since she was posing as Darlene Fisher, she said she was coming from Fairfax, Missouri, where she was saying that she lived, which is a town near Skidmore. That night, Bobby Joe told her mother and her husband, her mother's name is Becky Harper, and her husband, Zeb, that a woman from Fairfax was coming there to pick out a puppy. On December 16th, Lisa hopped in her car, drove herself from Melbourne to Skidmore. She got to Bobby Joe's residence about 12.30 p.m. In her jacket pocket, she carried a sharp kitchen knife and a white cord. The ladies took the puppies outside for a while and played with them. And at 2.30 p.m., Bobby Joe's mom, Becky, called her, reminding her that she was going to come pick up Becky from work in an hour at 3.30. After Bobby Joe hung up the phone, somewhere between that, call it 2.30 and 3.30, when she was supposed to pick up her mother, she was brutally and fatally attacked by Lisa. She, Lisa used the cord to strangle Bobby Joe until she was unconscious. Then she took the kitchen knife and cut into Bobby Joe's abdomen, doing her own C-section of sorts. When this happened, Bobby Joe woke up. She regained consciousness and they struggled. There was evidence of a struggle. So then Lisa strangled Bobby Joe again a second time, her killing her. Kill this case has finally come to a close, but we will never stop missing Bobby Joe. She was a sweet and loving wife, daughter, and sister, and would have been a wonderful mother. Becky Harper is the mom of 23-year-old Bobby Joe Stinnett, the grandmother of Victoria Joe. Becky found Bobby Joe's bloody and battered body in her Skidmore, Missouri home on December 16, 2004. Victoria Joe was recovered the next day at the Melbourne, Kansas home. Of Lisa cut the umbilical cord Montgomery and booked baby. it. She left with the baby in her arms. She got in her car. She drove with the baby in her arms and was pinching the umbilical cord with her fingers to keep it from bleeding because it was not clamped. You need to clamp an umbilical cord or tie it off. And she held it with her fingers. When Bobby Joe didn't show up to pick up her mom, Becky, her mom called her a little after 3.30 and there was no answer. So Becky walked the two blocks to Bobby Joe's house and the front door was open. She went inside looking for her daughter and calling for her. She reached the dining room where she found 
Bobby Joe laying there in a mess of blood. She was freaked out and she called 911. When she called 911, she told the dispatcher that her daughter was eight months pregnant and in need of medical care. She said it looked as if her stomach had exploded. Meanwhile, after Lisa Montgomery got away from Bobby Joe's house, she pulled her car over. She stopped the car to clamp the cord of the baby, suctioned the baby's mouth, and wiped the baby down with baby wipes. Now the baby was about a month premature, so the baby might have had some difficulty breathing at this stage. It was really risky, to be honest. Um, there was a small cut above the baby's eye, and she was crying. So basically the baby was uninjured, thankfully. She cleaned the baby up, and she happened, happened to have a car seat in her trunk. She got the car seat out, she put it in the car, and she put the baby in the car seat. From there, she drove to Topeka, Kansas, and she called her husband, Kevin, and announced that she had given birth. Oh, I was out shopping, I went into labor, and I gave birth at a clinic in Topeka. Come get me. She said, Abigail has been born named the baby Abigail. She told him she went into labor, she was Christmas shopping, and she said she went to a women's clinic and gave birth. She asked her husband to meet her at a parking lot near that clinic. And he did. He and two of Lisa's older children showed up to pick her up. Lisa and Kevin drove home in his truck with the baby, and Lisa's daughter and son drove her car home. Once they got home, they called friends and relatives to announce the arrival of their new beautiful baby girl, Abigail. They slept in the living room next to the baby's bassinet, and the next day, they actually went out about town, ran errands, went out to eat, and showed off their new baby girl in town. They introduced Abigail to people they met. There's our new baby. Look at our new baby Abigail. She was born yesterday. First of all, don't take your baby out the day after they're born. But anyways, we know this woman is batshit crazy, so we don't have to give her instructions. After they returned home, so this was December 17th, 2004, shortly after they returned home, law enforcement officials knocked on their door. Kevin, Lisa's husband, this is her second husband, answered the door and invited the officers in the home. Come on in. He was clueless, let me tell you. Lisa was sitting on the sofa, holding the baby. And according to news reports, an Amber Alert was actually on the news talking about this missing baby while the officers showed up in the house. Sergeant Investigator Randy Strong told them that they were investigating the murder of Bobby Joe Stinnett. He then asked them about their baby. And Lisa said, oh, I gave birth at a woman's clinic in Topeka yesterday. She said to her husband, Kevin, go to the truck and get my discharge papers from the clinic. So he went out to the truck to retrieve these discharge papers and couldn't find them. Imagine that. Couldn't find them anywhere. So he came back in and the officers then said, um, Lisa, why don't we step outside and speak? She gave one of the other officers the baby to hold. Here, hold my baby, hold Abigail. And she went outside with uh, Officer Strong and explained. She came up with a new story here. She explained that her family was suffering from some financial difficulties and she didn't want her husband to know that she had had a home birth. She said she had the home birth with the help of two friends. 
So he asked, well, what, what are the name of your two friends? And she said, oh, 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 well, well, they weren't actually here. They were just available by phone in case I had any problems during the birth. She told them, I gave birth in the kitchen and I, flew, I threw the placenta in the creek. Uh, just FYI, that's biohazard. You can't throw your placenta in a creek. But aside from that, the murder is a much bigger deal. So we know it didn't happen anyways. Lisa asked them to move the questioning to the sheriff's office. She clearly realized at this point that she was probably in big, fat trouble. Shortly thereafter, she did confess to killing Bobby Joe and removing the fetus from her body and abducting the child. The baby was returned to the father and he named the baby Victoria Joe. Police were able to track down Lisa by checking computer records, examining online message boards, and tracing her IP address. Um, and an IP address actually identifies a computer and the location of the computer. Uh, colleagues confirmed that Kevin Montgomery worked at Acme Sign Company in Kansas City, Missouri. It's a 70-mile commute each way. So he would be gone a lot so she could get away with delivering a baby in the kitchen or driving away and delivering a baby. Who knows? But he did work quite a bit away, 70 miles each way for his job. A former employee that worked with Lisa said she had juggled three jobs at one point, working for a contractor who managed the Greyhound bus stop in Topeka and at a Wendy's restaurant and at a petrol station. So at one point, Lisa was working three jobs. She had not worked though since mid-November and it was commented by a colleague that it was his understanding that she was cutting back on workload because she was expecting a baby. Authorities from regional offices and the FBI determined that no forceful entry was made into the home and information on Bobby Joe's computer later verified that she had made arrangements to meet with Darlene Fisher about the sale of the puppy. And that was to be done on the day of her, that she wound up actually being murdered. So while Lisa was being questioned at the Atchison County Sheriff's Office, they pulled in all their resources and they could not find a Darlene Fisher anywhere. No one ever heard of her. Mr. Strong said we became very suspicious that we had a fake name. In a frantic effort to find the missing baby, not knowing if it was alive or dead, they struggled to get an Amber Alert placed for the baby. And because of the Amber Alert criteria, as a physical description of someone taking the child and the child, there was absolutely no protocol for an unseen newborn baby. They, all they knew was the fetus was removed. The Amber Alert was denied. Thanks to a joint effort and a phone call to U.S. Congressman Sam Graves, they were able to enact the Amber Alert for the missing baby. So media broadcasts went up across the nation and a tip tied to the name of Mrs. Fisher, additional witnesses, information, and computer forensics led to Lisa Marie Montgomery. Montgomery said the baby was hers. It's a crime that's so uh, vile, so shocking, and uh, it was premeditated. And there's no doubt Lisa Montgomery killed Bobby Joe Stinnett. There's no doubt about that. And so I think it's uh, uh, an appropriate verdict. The jury sent a clear message in their verdict form that while they believe Montgomery was physically, mentally, and sexually abused as a child, she is still totally responsible for the crimes she committed. Victoria Jo will turn three on the third anniversary of her mother's murder. Her father and the rest of the family thanked everyone involved that they still have her. People like Nottaway County Sheriff Ben Espy. Victoria Jo is very beautiful. Looks a lot like her mother. Um, talking very intelligently talking we will she was 36 years old and she claimed to be pregnant 
So they partnered with Lieutenant Don Fritz at the Cameron Police Department. Mr. Strong and Mr. Fritz got in their car and sped down the highway to the Montgomery's home in Melbourne, Kansas. They were hoping to find the baby alive. The address was 32419 South Adams Road in Melbourne, Kansas. When they got there and they saw the child, the infant, the newborn baby, he said, you could tell that the head was probably born through a C-section. I don't know if you could really tell that because a lot of babies, if moms have already had a child, they come, they stay high and they come down so fast that they don't have the misshapen head like a firstborn might. The firstborns are a lot slower to birth. They stick in the birth canal and they their head can be cone-headed, but not necessarily would have had a perfectly round head. Um, not necessarily would she have not had a perfectly round head with a normal spontaneous vaginal delivery. But that's just my, there's my OB nurse coming out at you here. I digress a little bit. But he said, you could tell the baby's head looked like it was a cesarean birth. And he said the color was good, but the baby wasn't crying. And that bothered him. But they were relieved. The baby was alive and seemingly healthy. Handed off, like we said, to another agent, FBI agent, before the baby was then transported to a local hospital for evaluation. Mr. Strong and Mr. Fritz took Lisa Montgomery away from the home. And they took her to a local undercover narcotics facility a few miles away to question her. So two veteran officers sat with Lisa and she was unkempt and asking for cigarettes and just really kind of a mess. And they pretty much figured they just needed her to confess. She began to slowly detail her involvement in the murder. She started telling them what happened. He said, I slid my chair right up, almost against her chair. Our knees were almost touching. And I reached out, Mr. Fritz said. She put her hand in my hand. I put my other hand on top of hers. And I said, we need to get this lined out. We need to get to the bottom of this. After speaking calmly with Lisa, who was the suspected murderer, Mr. Fretz said they heard what they needed to hear. They heard what they were waiting for. She goes, it's terrible. I can't talk about it, he remembers. And I said, we already know. We already know what happened. Then Lisa said, well, you've got Bobby Joe's baby. We will never forget the members of the law enforcement who found Bobby Joe's murder in less than 24 hours and returned Victoria Joe safely to us. Now, after reading that family statement, the family said that they will hope that their privacy will be respected. The jurors left here today without comment. Lisa Montgomery becomes just the third woman scheduled for execution in the federal system. We're live at the federal courthouse, downtown Kansas City. Back to you. you. Lisa Montgomery was tried and convicted of murder and sentenced to death, which is scheduled in about five weeks from right now. It is scheduled for December 8th, 2020. It was comforting for the family. Uh, it was comforting for the family of Bobby Joe to have this conviction, but her husband was, but Lisa's husband was standing by Lisa through and through to the end. And he was extremely devastated. 
Peggy, thank you. Despite every awful detail in this case emerging over the past three years, Lisa Montgomery's husband has remained by her side. Now, he did speak out today for the first time since Lisa's trial began, and KMBC 9's Martin Augustine was there. Martin, how was he holding up? Well, Kelly, Kevin Montgomery has put up such a brave face over the past three years, but his face today was that of a devastated man pulled in so many directions for so very long leaving the courthouse after hearing a jury recommend that his wife die for her crime, Montgomery's eyes were red with emotion. Supported by his parents, he managed to answer some questions, taking exception to the way Lisa was characterized in court and promising to stand by her and their marriage. The prosecutor gave you a circus. It's pretty bad. We don't want to tell one side, sir. It's pretty bad when we think there's a winner in this. When you Come get there and you take a promise. I don't take it lightly. Montgomery describes his wife as not just his wife, but his very good friend. Lisa Montgomery's attorney says she's a sweet individual, and he wishes he could have made that more clear to the jury. There will be an appeal in this case, which will start in a few days. Kelly? Thank you, Martin. Now, once again, here's a look at today's developments. A jury is recommending Lisa Montgomery receive the death penalty for killing Bobby Jo Stinnett and cutting the baby from her womb. Jurors deliberated for more than five hours. While the judge will sentence Montgomery, he tells jurors he is obligated to abide by their recommendation. A sentencing date has not yet been set. Lisa's attorneys have attempted to appeal the death sentence, and that has not worked. But we learned a lot more information during the appeal process. Evidence from the trial established that Lisa's biological father was an alcoholic and her mother consumed alcohol to the point of inebriation throughout Lisa's pregnancy when her mother was pregnant with her. Growing up was a nightmare for Lisa. They moved all the time. Um, she saw her half-sister Diane being taken from the home and being adopted by another family. And her biological parents divorced when she was three years old. Her mother then married a man named Jack Kleiner. Jack physically abused Lisa and her sister Patty for years. Eventually, he started sexually assaulting Lisa around the age of 14. In February of 1984, her mother actually witnessed Jack raping Lisa and filed for divorce. Soon after, Lisa started counseling, but once the divorce was finished, she stopped going to the counseling. Jack was never prosecuted for the sexual abuse. So when they divorced, Lisa was 16, and witnesses said that the mother actually blamed Lisa for the abuse and the divorce. Her mother denies ever doing so. There are some that say that her mother actually held a gun to her head when she learned of the sexual abuse, and she blamed Lisa. When Lisa turned 18, she married her stepbrother, Carl Bowman. This was August of 1986. She had her first baby in January of 87, and then she had three more babies in the three years following, so four children in four years. In 1990, she had her tubes tied. Remember I said that a very small percentage of these can fail, but pre-trial, they did a procedure on Lisa that proved that she was, in fact, infertile from the tubal ligation. And they confirmed that she never would have been pregnant after that tubal ligation in 1990. But in the years following the tubal ligation, she claimed to be pregnant four more times. Lisa and her husband, Carl, were separated at one period of time and in 1994 while they were separated she had an affair and claimed to be pregnant later her and carl got back together and she no longer made the claim that she was pregnant they did wind up divorcing in 1998 in 2000 in the year 2000 before her and kevin montgomery were married she told him that she was pregnant and intended to have an abortion. Kevin gave her 40 bucks, and the pregnancy was never mentioned again. The third time was in 2002. She told her friends and family that she was pregnant again. She said she was receiving her prenatal care from her doctor, 
but she would not let Kevin come with her to any of the appointments. During her trial, the doctor testified that he did treat her for ankle pain and a cold, but never for a pregnancy. When that due date passed on her third fake pregnancy, she told Kevin, oh, the baby died and I donated its body to science. Oh, Kevin, Kevin, Kevin. He believed all this bullshit? Really? Wow. I mean, that's just insane. Then the next claim of pregnancy was Bobby Joe's pregnancy. It was in 2004 and she informed everyone that she was due in December of 2004. Now, throughout 2004, she was involved with a custody battle with her first husband, Carl. He knew that she was unable to become pregnant and he knew she was again claiming to be pregnant. And he and his current wife sent emails to Lisa saying, um, we are going to expose you. We are going to expose your deception to your family and I'm going to use it against you in this custody battle with our children. She told them she would prove them wrong. On December 10th, 2004, Carl filed a motion against Lisa for a change in custody of the two minor children that were living with Lisa. Could this have been the moment where she decided that she really was going to go after Bobby Joe's baby since she had to prove them wrong and she was due any day according to her dates and timeline? And is this what caused her to actually show up and murder Bobby Joe just to prove them wrong? Now back to the murder of Bobby Joe. The, ju the jury trial commenced on October 1st, 2007. Prior to the trial, Lisa filed her notice of intent to rely on defenses related to mental disease or defect. Defense counsel had a doctor by the name of Dr. Ramachandran, sorry if I messed up the name, and William Logan. He had him evaluate Lisa Montgomery. And they both actually diagnosed her with several mental health conditions. They diagnosed her with depression, borderline personality disorder, post-traumatic stress disorder, PTSD, and pseudocyesis. Pseudocyesis is a false pregnancy. The meaning of it is false pregnancy. However, people with pseudocyesis actually do, in fact, have pregnancy symptoms. Clinically, um, it's termed pseudocyesis, but it is the belief that you are expecting a baby when you are not really carrying a child. People with pseudocyesis have many, if not all, pregnancy symptoms, with the exception of an actual baby. Now, the prosecution completely disagreed with this because Lisa knew she wasn't pregnant. She even faked ultrasounds and put her name and due date on them. Lisa knew she wasn't pregnant. Pseudocyesis is when you actually believe that you're pregnant, you have symptoms, but there is no fetus. So the government experts for the prosecution did agree that Lisa had depression, borderline personality disorder, PTSD, but not pseudocyesis. After hearing two days of expert testimony, the district court concluded that the MRIs that they performed on Lisa were not abnormal and did not show any mental health condition or circumstance that would be relevant to matters at issue in the case. There was some PET scan done that may have shown some evidence, but it was excluded in the, in the trial. PET scan was not allowed because it had minimal probative value. Since the abnormalities that they did find 
could be consistent with many disorders, including pseudocyesis. So that was not allowed. The first phase of the trial was called the guilt phase, and it was 11 days of testimony. This phase was trying to prove that Lisa wasn't guilty based on reason of insanity. Witnesses testified that Lisa's background contributed to her mental illness, and one of the doctor expert witnesses stated that she did suffer from the pseudocyesis delusion and that she was in a dissociative state when she murdered Bobby Joe. He stated that she had extensive internet research on home birth, hormones to assist in delivery, and minimal research on C-sections, as well as she purchased maternity clothes, baby items, and a home birthing kit. Lisa also claimed that her half-brother, Tommy Kloner, was actually present at the murder, but he had an alibi. So the defense tried to use this as saying she was basically out of her mind, deluded, and in a dissociative state. The government expert for the prosecution disagreed and stated that she did not suffer from pseudocyesis because she did not hold a sincere belief that she was pregnant, citing evidence of her tubal ligation, her failure to seek medical care and medical confirmation of the pregnancy, cancellations of her doctor's appointments, and an insurance application that she wrote applied in September of 2004, stating she wasn't pregnant. The doctor stated she did not suffer from any mental disease or defect that affected her ability to appreciate the nature and quality of wrongfulness of her acts, end quote. After other expert witnesses testified that they believe Lisa was malingering, lying, faking, she knew she was lying. At the close of the guilt phase, the jury found Lisa guilty of kidnapping Victoria Joe Stinnett, resulting in the death of Bobby Joe Stinnett. The case proceeded to the second phase or penalty phase of the trial, and that spanned two days and included testimony from Lisa's friends, family, co-workers, and Dr. Logan and Ruth Kunkel. In particular, Lisa's half-sister Diane Mattingly testified regarding her life growing up in the care of their mother, Judy Shaughnessy. Diane described her early life with Judy as walking on eggshells and being made to feel like she was not good enough. She described protecting Lisa and her sister Patty from a violent man, but she did not testify that she was molested while Lisa was in the room with her. Um, they presented a comprehensive overview of Lisa's life history and how events such as her father and sister disappearing from her life and the physical and sexual abuse affected her. After hearing the prosecution's presentation and Lisa's mitigating evidence, the jury did determine that Lisa should be sentenced to death. The special verdict form reveals that the jury found the government established beyond a reasonable doubt all six aggravating factors. As for mitigating factors, eight jurors found Lisa was the victim of childhood physical and sexual abuse at the hands of her stepfather, Jack, and was psychologically and emotionally damaged as a result of that abuse. Seven jurors found that Lisa was the victim of childhood emotional abuse at the hands of her mother, Judy, Kleiner, now Judy Shaughnessy, and was psychologically and emotionally damaged as a result of that abuse. Ten jurors found that Lisa never received adequate treatment for the abuse which she received. However, nine jurors found that despite having been the victim of significant sexual, physical, and emotional abuse, Lisa Montgomery raised four good children. She was capable. She worked many jobs to support her children. On April 4th, 
2008, the court sentenced Lisa Montgomery to death. She appealed, but that got her nowhere. And she is set to go to death by lethal injection this year, December 8, 2020. We will continue to follow this and keep up and see what happens with her on December 8, 2020. Thank you for watching Left Undone Incomplete Investigations. I'm Catherine. Stay safe. Stay well. See you soon.